DBM is important questions part 2 SQL question number 4. So this is a continuation of our previous uh, video lecture that is what are the types of integrity constraints in SQL and define the types of constraints in SQL. So in our previous video lecture we spoke about the integrity constraint that is the protocols that imply over the table or the rules that we imply over the tables. There we said there are two types of integrity constraints in that the first one is the domain constraint. So in domain constraint, we have seen um, the, at, I mean, uh, the constraint that is not null, unique, primary key, foreign key, check, default. So among these, we have discussed about the primary key constraint and foreign key constraint. So the link of that video lecture is provided in the i button. You can click on to it and watch the video um, where the primary key and foreign key constraints were discussed. So let's move on to the next constraint uh, that is uh, unique constraint. So what is meant by unique constraint? So the constraint, this unique constraint is used to prevent the same values in a column. So same values in the cells the duplicate data inside that. So which type of attribute or uh, attribute that requires unique values? So it is nothing but the key attribute, isn't it? So any key of a table should only carry the unique values. Okay, now let's try go for an example that is employee table. So this employee table, uh, actually we have some one, we'll be selecting one attribute that is designation where it need to be unique. Okay, so let's try to see how to mention the unique constraint while creating the table. Okay, so immediately when I use the create command, it means that this is a DDL and it is nothing but the schema level, okay? So, once I create the table whose name is employee, the attributes that are fixed are employee ID with int data type, next name with varchar data type of maximum length 20, then designation followed by varchar of maximum length 20. So, once you write designation and this data type, here you mention the constraint that is unique constraint. And after defining the unique constraint for the designation part, then we are going to select employee ID as primary key like this saying, a primary key in bracket employee ID at the end. So I have a question. So why is that we are not using unique for employee ID? Because employee ID is a key and it should be unique obviously. Then why is that key unique not mentioned over here? It is because as we are putting employee ID in the primary key element, obviously the default characters of all the primary key will be implied to the employee ID. That means by default the data will be unique for employee ID because it is defined as primary key. Hope the concept is clear. So next one, if the table is already created, so in this case, we are creating the table and defining the constraint as unique. But if in case the table is already created and if we want to add the unique constraint over here, what should be done? For that, it's already mentioned in the DDL command, any alteration in the existing table, for that we have to go for the alter command. Use alter and mention the object type that is table a name of the object that is employee here and then say modify modify we uh, observe very carefully here i'm using modify what should i modify i have to modify the attribute designation saying it has to be unique that means when the table was created Assume that is when the table was created, the designation was not unique. And later, we decided to make the designation attribute as unique. That's why I've gone for the command alter, then mention all the elements and then go for the modify keyword and say the designation 
and again data type along with the unique element inside. So this is about the unique construct. Next one is not null. So not null, this is, this is very simple. Not null means the value or the column should not allow null values. Null values in the sense no values inside no values inside even the zero is not considered as null value because zero is also a type of value over here if we, if i have a cell in the table mentioning null that means it has no value inserted inside okay so observe the example so here i have again created one table whose name is employee and the attributes are employee id int and here I'm mentioning as not null. That means the employee ID cell should not be empty. It should not be empty or it should not be null. Same way even for the name, I'm fixing the constraint as not null and so on. And at the end, the primary key is employee ID. So this can be best compared with the, the example. So what is that example? Usually when you fill any application form, so there some of the fields so if you're filling the application form online especially there some of the fields will be marked the star say name star so what does it mean the star says it is a mandatory field which cannot be left empty that means if it is left empty your application will not will not be taken or it cannot be submitted so all those attributes or the elements which are marked star are nothing but the not null elements not null elements so next one is the check constraint so what is this check constraint the check constraint is used to limit the value range that can be placed in the column we are limiting the value range so this can be best understood by this example so here i have created a table whose name is parts and the attributes are part number int which is taken as primary key and then the description which is variable character of maximum length 40 and then price which is decimal or numeric whose value is 10 or 20 that means 10 digits before the decimal point allow two digits after the decimal point allow and this price is should not be null and there's a condition that has to be checked here is the cost should not be less than zero the cost should not be less than zero what is that here i'm fixing the condition using the check constraint saying if anyone is entering the value of the cost less than zero just reject it so before adding the value inside the table check whether the value is greater than cost okay so it should not be less than zero so that's why i can write here as cost should be greater than zero check whether the cost is greater than zero and then allow the values inside the table so for this kind of uh, uh, conditions we go for check constraint next one is a default constraint so what is this default constraint about it is used to set the default value for the column so assume there's no value entered for that say if an if there is an attribute and in this attribute one record does not enter any value so that value we assign in the default saying if the value is not mentioned add so and so value inside that so better let's try to understand this with the example use create I have created a table whose name is person and look into the attributes id, last name, first name, age and at the end observe very carefully I have an attribute called as course whose data type is var care of 255 characters and here I am saying default dbms that means if this course is not having any value inside enter dbms in its place don't leave it as null and instead of that place it as dbms so if no value is entered inside the course take dbms 
as a default value as simple as it is so where this kind of this default constraint is most useful this is use, useful mainly in case of date date so for example i have created a table orders whose attributes are id order number and order date if a person or user has not entered the order date here then if i write the constraint something like this default get date function then it is going to take the values from the system so the day present date and the time would be taken from the system and save in the database for this we have a special function called as get date function so this is going to take the values from the system or your computer so that is how your default constraint works on so so far we have seen all the constraints that is first one the domain constraint and in this domain constraint we have looked into the concept of primary key and then followed by foreign key then unique constraint followed by not null constraint check default so make sure you write all these points mentioned in the ppt or the video along with the examples and the continuation of this video lecture that is the concept of next type of constraints you see here in the integrity constraints i have mentioned there are two types isn't it so here we have seen the domain constraint part and the next part will be the key constraints so that key constraint part we'll see in the next video lecture so if your question is about constraints it's enough to explain all these constraints given so all those six constraints we have taken I hope the concept is clear. Thank you very much.